Hi there guys. This may look a little bit like a, uh, a cap gun or a toy, but it is in fact a real functioning revolver. And it is an old Harrington and Richardson 622. And this is uh, an economy revolver made uh, probably about 50 odd years ago. And the thing that makes it look so much like a cap gun, at least to me, are these uh, plastic grips. They look just like something that you should uh, should see in a kid's cap gun set. This is a single and double action revolver. It can be cocked for single action, and you can also fire it double action. And it is a six shot solid frame revolver. And it loads and un unloads by means of removing the cylinder pin here. And on this one, the cylinder pin is actually a slightly bent, but it's just held in there basically with a bit of uh, spring friction. And you pull the cylinder pin out, like that. And then by moving the hammer back slightly, you can remove the cylinder. And as you can see, it's a six shot. And to eject fired cases, you put the cylinder rod back in, and that allows you to push the ejector star out. So not a uh, very fast to load and unload little revolver, but very very sturdy and uh, somewhat practical. Rear sight is a fixed notch, and we've got a blade front sight. This one's slightly bent. Must have got walloped at some point in time. This gun has seen a lot of wear, as you can tell by the look of it. Very little uh, blue left on the cylinder, very little blue left on the barrel, a little bit more left on the frame. Anyway, I'm going to take it over and load it up and shoot it a little bit. We'll see how it does. Do not mistake this port in the back as a loading port or an unloading port because this is basically just an inspection hole. I'm going to show you here, you cannot actually load a cartridge into the gun that way. You can see that the, uh, the rim of the cartridge actually gets hung up in the frame if you try to do that. And of course the, uh, the same is true for trying to unload. So this is just an inspection notch to let you see whether the gun is loaded. So in fact if you want to examine this to see if there's any cartridges in it, the cylinder is locked while the hammer's ahead, so if you pull the hammer back just slightly, it unlocks the cylinder, and that allows you to index the cylinder around to check the chambers to see if it's loaded. So of course, since this is six shots, if you're trying to make sure that it's unloaded without taking the cylinder out, be sure to count six empty holes. So to load, we'll pull the cylinder pin out, and it's just held in with some uh, friction from a spring catch. So just hold on to the cylinder while you do this, because otherwise the cylinder is going to fall out in the ground. So there's our cylinder pin. Set that somewhere as convenient. And then push the cylinder out. You can push it out to either the left or the right side of the revolver. So to load, take your cartridges and just place them in each individual chamber. I'm shooting some CCI Blazer today. A very uh, reliable 22 rimfire load, in my experience. So with six cartridges in the revolver chamber, in the cylinder, just take the cylinder and place it back into the frame. Keep your fingers on the other side to keep it from falling through. Take our cylinder pin, put it back in the frame, and shove it in until it's locked in place. Now here's what I was saying about this being a, uh, this window here being basically an inspection mark. So with the hammer pulled back very slightly, you can rotate the cylinder and you can see the cartridges are in there. But the cartridges will not come out that hole because it is not, it doesn't go all the way down to the bottom so they won't clear, they won't fall out of the gun is, it, is what it basically means. Anyway, with uh, the little gun ready to go, we're going to fire mentioned. a few shots. Gun can be fired with uh, single action, cocking the hammer to the rear.
or you can fire it double action. Now that the gun has been fired, there's no more uh, live ammunition in it, we're going to unload it. So simply reverse the uh, procedure of loading, so pull the cylinder pin out. Once again, hold on to the cylinder so it doesn't fall out. You may have to pull the hammer back slightly to get the, the cylinder out when there's fired cartridges in the gun. And there we can see our fired brass. Gun gave each cartridge a fairly good little poke. Fairly good hammer spring on this example. You can see the, uh, the star there, which the hand on the frame indexes with to turn the cylinder around. And then to poke the empties out, you can actually poke them out one at a time. If you don't want to eject all of them, you can actually use the cylinder pin to poke individual cartridges out if you so desire. Say you only fired uh, two shots and you wanted to top the gun up, you can do that. But if you fired all of the cartridges, you can put the cylinder pin in the front and lift up on the ejector star. And then that lets you take all the, uh, the empties out at once. Okay, back at uh, about 10 yards here, we're going to try six shots fairly slow to see what we can do with this little H&R 622. Okay, six shots at about uh, 10 yards. One, two, three, four, five, and then one way up here, which perplexes me a bit. I may have to try a few more to see how that happened. Um, the, the revolver shoots quite low. I was holding on this red portion right here, and they're falling a good, you know, four inches below that, even at this close distance. So for my, ne my next hold point, I think I'm going to try basically the top edge of the target. See what that, see what that does. Okay, attempt number two. At 10 yards off the of rest, see what we can do with this little H&R. Okay, second attempt at uh, 10 yards with the old H&R 622 and Blazer ammo. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's a couple inches, which for uh, a cheap old utility revolver, I guess, is not too bad. Still shoots quite low. I'm using the very top of the target right here as a hold point. So, you know, one, two, I guess it's about three inches off the money at that distance. All right, I've got a uh, target set up at 25 yards. This is a homemade coyote target. It's supposed to simulate a coyote that's uh, turned around to look back at you, which is something that coyotes do when they run away. They often turn around to look back. Not that I can shoot coyotes up here with a handgun, but what the hell, we'll, we'll pretend we can. So let's see uh, if we can hit this with the little 22 revolver from, from back that far. Here that our coyote escaped completely unscathed because we've got all our shots right down here. One, two, three, four, five. I was actually holding between his ears here so it shoots really low and uh, apparently somewhat to the right. Not to say one thing about this uh, revolver's very slow to load and unload 
It uh, certainly makes your ammunition last a lot longer. If you're having a hard time finding 22 ammo, something like this uh, may actually help you conserve it because it does take quite a while to load and unload. Kind of makes for a good, uh, you know, Sunday afternoon clinking type of setup. Certainly nothing high speed about it at all, but for kind of a relaxed, casual sort of a shooting experience, not a bad little gun for that. The biggest downside would have to be the lack of uh, adjustable sights. And uh, this particular example shoots fairly far away from, uh, from where the sights point. Another thing about all the uh, handling and uh, loading and unloading is your hands get pretty dirty. You can see how much crap's on my hands from, uh, from handling this thing. And there's a little bit of uh, side blast off the cylinder. And my, my thumb is actually getting that from holding the... Uh, I'm actually got my thumb a little bit ahead of the, the gap, so that's not helping me any there.